Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make chocolate crepes. Hey, Sugar Spun Bakers, it's Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. I received a lot of requests for a chocolate version of my popular crepe recipe, so today I am delivering. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that you need for today's recipe is one third cup of very hot water. You can even use boiling water, that would also be fine. Now, to this water, we're going to be adding three tablespoons of of natural unsweetened cocoa powder. We're gonna whisk that in really well. The hot water is key here because what this is doing is this is going to bloom the cocoa powder. It's going to really intensify the chocolate flavor and give you a really nice flavor that you wouldn't have if you just used cold water. Now set this aside for now, we're going to come back to it in a bit. And then in a large mixing bowl, we're going to combine one cup of all-purpose flour with three tablespoons of granulated sugar and a half teaspoon of table salt. And I'm just going to whisk these together until everything's really nice nicely combined. Now I like to make sort of a well in the center of the mixing bowl and into this well I'm going to pour our chocolate mixture. And I have one cup of whole milk measured out here. For now I'm just going to be adding about half of that to the mixing bowl. And I'm also going to be adding two large eggs and I like to just lightly beat these first. Two tablespoons of melted unsalted butter and three fourths teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now we're just going to whisk everything together. I'm going to start in the center, so I'm getting the liquid ingredients nicely combined, and then moving outward and incorporating the dry ingredients as well. And I wanna do this until I have a nice, smooth mixture. Now, I don't add all of the milk at once because I find if I do, I end up having too much liquid and then I end up with a sort of lumpy flour mixture. So now that I have this mixture well incorporated and nicely combined, now I'm going to slowly add the remainder of my milk. I find this is the best way to get a nice, smooth crepe batter. All right, once this is smooth and well combined, your batter is really just about done. However, with crepe batter, one of the best things you can do for it is let it rest in the fridge for at least 30 to 60 minutes. So I'm just going to cover this with a piece of plastic wrap and I'm gonna pop it in the fridge and let it chill for about an hour. The great thing about crepes is this batter is ideal for making ahead and you can let it sit covered in your refrigerator for up to two days before using. Now, once your crepe batter has had time to rest, we're going to want to head over to our stove top and I highly recommend using a non non-stick pan when making crepes. You do always want to briefly stir your crepe batter before using it again after it's been sitting just to make sure everything's well combined. Now turn your stovetop heat to medium and I like to use a little bit of either vegetable oil or canola oil and I'm just going to use a pastry brush to very lightly coat the bottom of the crepe pan with a little bit of oil. You do not want to use too much. Using too much can actually make your crepes turn out rubbery. Now this pan needs to heat up before you add your crepe batter. The best way to tell if it's ready is if you hover your hand over the pan, you should be able to feel the heat radiating off of it. Every time I make crepes, I feel like the first one is always an experiment. It always comes out a little bit wonky, so give yourself a little bit of grace over that first crepe. But once your pan is nicely heated, we're going to take our crepe batter, and we're going to take about a fourth cup of batter and pour it into our pan. We're gonna lift that pan off the heat and tilt and swirl it until that batter is nicely distributed all the way across the bottom of the pan in a nice even circle. It should just be a very thin layer. We'll return this to our stovetop heat and we're going to let this cook. Now, how long it takes to cook is going to depend on a lot of factors like exactly how much batter you used and exactly how hot your stovetop is. But what you wanna look for is you want to look for the crepe to be beginning to look dry and the edges should look set. Now, once that happens, you'll want to use a spatula to carefully flip that crepe. We'll cook it on the other side until it's cooked through. And like I said, the first one always seems to come out a little bit funny. I always consider it my test crepe. So as soon as you're finished with that one, we'll just remove it from the pan, take it over to a plate, and then we're just going to brush our pan again with a little bit of oil. Again, go really light. And the pan should already be warm, so pretty much right away you can add additional batter. Again, tilt and swirl that pan. And once again, we're going to cook this until the edges look set and the crepe looks dry and we'll flip it and cook it until it's cooked through on the other side. All right, now these chocolate crepes are perfectly thin, perfectly chocolatey, great for serving warm or chilled. They are flexible enough. You can roll them up and put a whipped cream filling in them or you can just fold them and serve them that way. I like to serve mine topped with strawberries.
And that is how you make my favorite chocolate crepes. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. And if you try this one out, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm. That's good.